Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. It's uh, Poet WP here again. <laughs> Today, I'm going to read some poetry that I wrote. And after that, I'm going to go over these books. Briefly. Actually, I'm not going to give, I'm just going to mention them. I'm not going to give a book report or anything. <laughs> I'm about to reread these, all th four of these. These are ones I read a long time ago. I need to revisit. Every so often you have to brush up on what inspires you. Make sure it's all reinforced in the line proper. Anyway, and then this is a movie they made based off this crazy book. <laughs> it's a trippy book. Anyway. And I had this out today because... On HBO Family... They were playing E.T. And whenever E.T. is playing, I always just uh, let it, uh, watch it. I'll watch it, you know, while it's on. A little spaceship. <laughs> this is one of the original relics from my childhood. The E.T. glass pizza hut back in the day. I have it on display now. Oh. Okay. E.T. was a cool movie. It was my sister's favorite movie. So we watched it a lot. Still playing right now. Anyway. Um, and then I'm going to give like a short mini review of these. Which I found out today are amazing. <laughs> I'm an almond. I love almonds. These are the best chocolate almonds I believe I've ever had. Anyway, whoops, sorry for the little shaky camera. So I'm going to read the poem now. So I can hold it right so that my hand doesn't interfere. This one's called Three Into One. I was struggling with what to name this, so. This is the fourth title that I decided on. So it's short and sweet. Three Into One. The shadows of pain with the awakening of the subtle body. When you don't have to look for what's dead inside because it goes right ahead and it presents itself through society. Not too far, it ain't so deep. The shame of ego. <clears throat> Your frustration and ignorance draws you up as tight as a firing pin, cocked. Lies unravel. Hate fizzles out. An Earl Burroughs destiny. Oh dear God, the disdain. The irony. And all this endless mental projection. Your perception is going to shatter. You back the wrong horse, bub. The divisions you create are not a part of true reality. You're... Your embroiled mechanisms of logic are feeding you only hate. And now the house of cards will fall. Get about your house of cards. And I'll do mine. A little radio aid for you. The quicksand ideologies being pulled will swallow up even... Uh, the quicksand ideologies being peddled, rather, will swallow up even the slyest of souls. The mass market, marketed hubris of the emotionally mismanaged, too woefully terrified of introspection to object. The mirage of better days drags the carrot on a stick out over the cliff. Fox News provides the fog. It's time to separate the wheat from the chaff. And the swine can have their pearls. We will take the oysters. We are the only ones who can reach them anyway. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I got into that one a little bit. The reason this poem is called Three Into One is because 
It is an amalgamation of three poems. Sorry, as I flail the paper around over here and make noise. It is an amalgamation of three poems that I wrote that I felt were getting a little redundant. So, not only that, I also felt that they were had a little too much piss and vinegar, a little too toothy, a little too much teeth, a little too much anger. So, I consolidated the breadth of wisdom, if you will, if there is such a thing, among these three poems into one. And therefore, its name was three into one. Now, I rarely, if ever, ever do this kind of thing, where I <clears throat> don't... Uh, I don't normally write three separate poems and then edit them down. In fact, I almost edit nothing. I believe in capturing the first the first thing that comes out is what it is, right? Almost all the time. Sometimes, I, only about 20% of the time, will I sit around and ponder or change things. Mostly, I just... Mostly, I, I just... Whatever comes out initially, like the initial top of the head whatever comes out of the top of my head you know off the top of my head um but so i almost never combine poems like this i've only ever done this like maybe twice while i was writing you know uh So, yeah, there was a significance about it. Anyway, I guess that's something for me to ponder greatly, more greatly, that I shouldn't ramble on ceaselessly about. These books are, uh, interestingly enough, The Coming of the Cosmic Christ by Matthew Fox. This is a very fascinating book. You want to read the back? You can pause and read it. Very fascinating book. Interestingly enough, I uh, found this book. I may have a story time video coming up. Uh, I may have a story time video coming up where I'm talking about my experience. And I spent a month in Zen Mountain Monastery, which is amazing. Let me just give you a, an idea of the chapters in this book, which are, are very pertinent to our times right now. Um, you know, I think that Christianity is severely limited by fear, anger, hatred, and division. Until we cure that, Jesus' true reality and the true message will never be fully manifested. Still haven't seen the forest for the trees, human race. This is the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Now this is something you can read a hundred times and ponder it differently every time. This is uh, uh, ancient, very deep. This book a lot of fascinating concepts. This book is kind of a collection of essays, if you will. 
from shamanism. I'm fascinated with shamanism. I've had past life regressions where I've been a shaman in three pre previous lives that I experienced in meditation. Could be my imagination. Could be real. Who knows? It was interesting. I had those experiences before I bought this book, of course. I really didn't know much about shamanism. I knew it heard the word and I knew it meant medicine man, right? But when I was in meditation, I had some past life regressions. Uh, I remember about a dozen of them. Anyway. You know, like I said, I'm gonna have a, I have a vast imagination, you know? So, uh, you know, it could be my imagination. Or it could be... My spirit is attuned to that sort of frequency that those spirits had maybe if they were in, in spirits that existed souls that existed right and I, my soul is like of a similar frequency or something right probably and it could be that i've honed in on meditation to like their life experiences and other you know timelines or something i don't know or it could be i was my soul was them and i lived them in past lives i think that's probably the explanation myself now, I don't rule any of these possibilities out. Most people would just say, oh, well, you just have a very vivid imagination because you're a writer. Well, that could be true, too. Maybe it's all true. Maybe all of it's true at the same time. Who knows? That's the whole point. <laughs> anyway, on to this book. Now, this is a trippy damn book. This is an original copy from, like, ancient old copy. Paperback. I toted this sucker around and get trashed. This is some far out trippy shit. Uh, you know, to be taken with a grain of salt to some degree, and some not. One should use their own discernment. But only after you transcend ego, and it takes a long damn time to figure out how to do that. Each person has their own unique key to doing it. This book, this dude basically did LSD and shrooms, and then he, like, sat in an isolation tank. He was, like, a Harvard professor, I believe. Like, Tim Leary, in the path of Tim Leary, kind of, back in the 60s. And he just, like, tripped his balls off, right? And, like, got in an isolation tank, which is this tank full of salt water that you just, like, float in, right? And you feel like you're in weightlessness. Like, uh, floating in empty space kind of feeling. Um, I've never experienced one. I'm going to build one one day. I'm going to build my, my own isolation tank. But I don't intend on doing any drugs in that. <laughs> I don't do drugs. When I was young, you know, much younger, you know, we experimented or whatever, but nothing that was serious. Just... Uh, but I don't, you know, you reach a point where you don't really need that, you know, you just don't need it. It's like you've been there, done that kind of thing. And after uh, John Lilly, he went on after this, after his whole, I want to discover God in the isolation tank on acid <laughs> quest. <laughs> he went, he, he went and he studied dolphins for the rest of his life. And that was his whole shtick. That was his whole deal, which is totally cool, right? Dolphins are amazing. Their echo communication is intricate as the English language practically. They literally communicate. They have a language. Their dolphins are intelligent, enlightened beings. And they sure shouldn't be in the damn SeaWorld parks. We have to save the dolphins and the whales and the elephants. All these mammal animals with big brains, we have a kinship with them. Anyway, I'm rambling now. But, uh, yeah, The Center of the Cyclone, super duper trippy book. That's basically what he did. Homeboy just, like, got in the isolation tank, did a shitload of psilocybin and shrooms on various sessions, right? I don't forget how many sessions he did. A few. 
And he just laid in the isolation tank. And he just like let his mind run wild. Center of the cyclone. And they made this movie about it. <laughs> in the basement of a medical school, Dr. Jessup floats in total darkness. The most terrifying experiment in the history of science is out of control, and the subject is himself. They made this kind of horror movie out of it. There's nothing about that book that's a horror movie or horror theme, even. It's just, they, they just, they just, they had to spice it up for Hollywood, right? <laughs> this is a crazy ass movie. Crazy movie. Super trippy, crazy. But good. I mean, you know, you like this sort of thing. As fiction. Very interesting. Not exact not like not like the book in any way. But the 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 concept other than other than tripping in an isolation tank in the lab of a basement. Like that's that's all that that it's based on basically on the book and some of his trippy experiences in the book in the movie but he turns into a bloody monkey at the end of this movie he never John C. Lilly never turned into a goddamn monkey obviously if anything he turned into a dolphin and he went with that path <laughs> not a monkey god bless him he did some fucking brave work anyway so yeah um yeah, there's there's all my things. This is going to be a long video. Oh, and this... I, I found these at this mall department store the other day. I love almonds. And these are the best damn almonds, uh, chocolate, dark chocolate almonds I think I've ever had. So, and they, <laughs> you paid for them, too. You paid... This is four bucks for two ounces of these things. So, it reminded me of that scene in uh, Pulp Fiction where uh, Vincent... And Mia are at uh, Jack Rabbit Slims. She orders a five dollar shake, and he, he's like, y "You just ordered a five dollar shake. That's a shake. That's milk and ice cream. That's five dollars. You don't put bourbon in it or nothing. Just checking. <laughs> it was kind of one of those moments, you know. But uh, wow, those are some bloody good chocolate almonds. Let me tell you, I love some almonds. Almond Joy." Jordan almonds, chocolate almonds. It's all pretty delish. Anyway, that's my little uh, poem slash book review slash candy review. With a little nostalgia fix thrown in. Hope you can dig it, gang. Catch you next time. Later.